Hi guys, uh, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about this uh, VCT SGR Sony camera grip. Now, a lot of you guys probably have seen this grip on my channel. Uh, I've used it quite often, but today we're going to review on whether is it worth $100 for this camera grip. Now, if you are wondering why is it in the box uh, when it's not new, I just want to show you guys how this box looks when you guys get this camera grip. Okay, so let's open it up and talk about the grip. So now this is the grip. So now after having this grip for more than a year, about 365 days, how often do I really use this grip? I would safely say I use it about 60% of the time and it's always my backup mini tripod. It is portable, small and has very convenient buttons which sometimes helps me to shoot video much easier. Now contrary to what is stated on the box or in Sony's website, actually you are able to use this for bigger cameras such as the A7 II uh, lineup. So overall, after using it for one year, I'll still safely say that it's still not worth this $100 to get this. Uh, firstly, the handle is a little bit short. So let's mount up my RX100 to show you guys. So as you guys can see, the handle is a little bit short. So unless your lens has a very wide angle lens, it will still look as if it's very close up. So it is not really very useful if you have a very close up lens. Now, so comparing the length of this grip with something like the Gorilla Pod, you can see the length of this Gorilla Pod is so much longer than this small little Sony grip, which allows uh, close up lens as you put it afar. So one more downside to this grip is that although it can stand such as this, for the RX100, it's a perfect tripod, but for heavier lenses, it tends to tilt a little bit forward. I'm using my uh, A6400 with the 16mm and it's actually quite a heavy lens, so it tends to tilt a little bit downwards. So it does have a maximum payload before it tilts forward or tilts back. So just take note of that. So let me take out my uh, A7 II with the 16 to 35 to show you guys. So now this is my A7 II with the 16-35mm. So let's mount it up. So I know this has a little long shot to put a heavier camera on top of this when it isn't meant to, but I need to show you guys the limitation so that you guys will know whether this uh, one will be able to fit uh, bigger lenses or not. As you guys can see, it's very wobbly due to the uh, uneven distribution of the weight. Now where it fares poorly is when once you hold it up, whoa, a lot of the weight is pushed to the front, which doesn't help it when you're vlogging, especially if you plan to vlog in a very long period of time. So it's definitely not for huge cameras. Okay, so now let's remove it and put my, back my RX100, which this grip was meant for. Now, as I put on my RX100, I need to let you guys know that actually the A6400 fits okay on this with the basic kit lens. Okay, let's turn it back on. So now let's talk about the functions that is on my camera grip. Now the zooming in function is really good, but I seldom use it as it doesn't really fit my style. For all those who plan to use the zooming in and zooming out style for your vloggings, it might actually help you. Now secondly, let's talk about the record button. Now the record button is a bit overrated. Why? I could just press the record button on my camera itself and later trim it during post. And sometimes using the on and off button might not be that responsive. Now saying all those points that I've mentioned, who is this camera really for? It is for all those who plan to vlog a lot and use the zooming in and zooming out function a lot. It is also useful for all those who plan to put this camera on a stationary place and just not care about it. Which sometimes questions, uh, why not just get a simple tripod to be able to put it there. That is where the price uh, consideration comes in if you can get probably $20 small tripod comparing with this uh, Sony grip. Now I'll safely say that this grip was meant for the RX100 line for all those other cameras that I've mentioned. As you guys can see, uh, it might not be able to handle the weight or the functionality that you want. So who is this camera grip not for? It's not for all those who plan to use a shorter uh, range uh, lens. As mentioned, the grip here is really short whereas comparing with something like a, a Gorilla Pod or something like a Switch Pod, 
it is much better. This will also not be for all those who plan to use a lot of stationary shots. As mentioned, you could just use a tripod or just lay your camera somewhere. It probably can cost you a lot lesser to get something like a Manfrotto Pixie uh, Evo 2. So unless all those functions which you really need such as zooming in, zooming out, the record button and perhaps uh, is this easily transform handle, I would say that it's actually not worth getting it for 100 USD. So if I was Sony, I'll price it about 60 to 70. I believe it's not worth the 100 USD and after using it for this long, about a year, I'll safely say that the functionality still doesn't justify the price. So I hope you guys like this one year experience which I've been using with this uh, SGR camera grip. Now if you guys like gadgets or other bag reviews, I've just reviewed this bag which only costs about 8 USD which can fit in about 16 of my items. If you're interested, please click on the video right here where you will go to the video and see whether this bag is for you. But for $8, I'll safely say that this is very well spent. So I hope you guys like this video. Please do like and subscribe so that you'll be up to date with my other gadget reviews or camera gear reviews. I also cover accessories and other lifestyle items. So I'm sure you guys will be interested if you enjoyed this one. So if not, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.